Hi, have you ever wondered how to properly write Hoya names? No? Well, you're not the only one. This video was requested by absolutely no one, but as always, I'm here to deliver content that nobody knew they needed. Or everybody knew they didn't need this content and this is just useless. Let's hope it's the first one. Before I continue, let's hear a word from the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. If you want to learn new skills and explore your creativity a bit more, Skillshare is a great place for you. It's an online learning community with amazing teachers and thousands of classes that can help you do just that. A class I enjoyed a lot this month is Star Drawing, Three Fun Freeing Exercises to Spark Your Creativity by Carly Kuhn. I always enjoyed drawing a lot and at one time I even thought I was gonna go into art school. However, over time my skill, let's say, diminished and I think now my drawing skills would only impress a three-year-old. However, I found the class by Carly to be a great way to reconnect with that and I'm now even thinking about using the techniques that I learned to draw on pots. Another class I found really interesting is Plants at Home. Uplift your spirit in your space by none other than the plant queen, Christopher Griffin. What I really liked in this class is how Christopher doesn't only talk about plant care and doesn't only give you plant care tips, but also how plants can become part of your space and how they can impact your life. It's very easy to get lost in plant collecting and that's something that I can definitely relate to, but what you can learn in this class is also how to take a step back and just appreciate all the plans that you have. The best thing about Skillshare is that if you have a busy schedule, you can really learn anytime. It's very easy to pause the classes and then continue just where you left off. Another great thing is that there are no ads, so when you can learn, you can do so without any interruptions. Since Skillshare is the sponsor of this video, first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description or in the pinned comment will get a one-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now, back to the video. You may not think that properly writing Hoya names is important, but believe me, quite a few mistakes can happen and misconceptions can be created when we write the name improperly. I will discuss about this a bit later, but first, let's just start with the basics. So how do you write a Hoya name? Botanical names consist of two parts. In first place, you will have the name of the genus, and then in the second place, you will have epithet or the name of the species. This is true for all plants. And the way you want to write botanical name is you want to capitalize the name of the genus and then the name of the species is never capitalized, ever. This is the rule that Hoya gods imposed on us. Actually, this is the rule that comes from international code of nomenclature or nomenclature, depending where you're from. That was a terrible accent change, wasn't it? And this is just a way to write a formal scientific or botanical name. Of course, the complexities don't end here, but this is the first one. So if you are to write Hoya Carnosa, for example, Hoya would be capitalized, Carnosa wouldn't. Hoya undulata, Hoya is capitalized, undulata is not. Later on, when we get into the details, you will understand why this is important. And I just want to say, Monstera Deliciosa, Deliciosa is not capitalized, you're welcome. So, you know, aeroids are not special here. Tis the rule for all the plants! Where are you two from? You know, I've been wondering that myself. I'm from London. I was one of two identical twins. Tragically, I was snatched from my crib at birth. Anyways, someone is losing focus. Who? Cool. Sometimes, of course, we don't know the exact species. And in that case, you may have seen names like Hoya species affinity Blachernazi or Hoya species affinity Bortonia, one of the very popular ones. In this case, you would capitalize again the name of the genus, as I said, always capitalized. So Hoya would be capitalized, SP for species would not be capitalized, Affinis or affinity that is also not capitalized and that is AFF, and then the species that we think it is closely related to is also not capitalized. There are times when part of the plant's name is capitalized other than the genus, but we will talk about that later. Sometimes your plant may be a cultivar of a species. For example, Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen or Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. In this case, you would put the name of the cultivar in single quotation marks. Not standard quotation marks, single quotation marks. By the way, there is another international code. It is International Code for Nomenclature of Cultivated Plants, I think. 
and in this code you will have guidelines how to write the name of cultivated plants. So, Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. We capitalize the name of the genus, we don't capitalize the species, we put single quotation marks, and then we write the name of the cultivar, Crimson Queen. Usually the names of the cultivars are capitalized, so K for Crimson, Q for Queen or princess, depending which one you have. By the way, it has come to my attention that this way of writing is used for published cultivars. And it has also come to my attention that most of the Hoya cultivars are not really published, but people give them names. What are we gonna do about that? I don't know, I don't have all the answers. I have very few, actually. I don't really know what are all the published cultivars of Hoyas, but I would like to look into that at one point in the future, semi-distant future, not today or tomorrow. For crosses, you will do the same thing. For example, Hoya Jennifer, Hoya Mathild, Hoya Shuke, Shuka. You will capitalize the name of the genus, and then you will put the name that was given to this cross under single quotation marks. The name of the cross will be capitalized. So for example, Hoya, single quotation marks, Jennifer with capital J. Cause she is that awesome. Now this is where some of the complications start. Some people might think that a plant is a cultivar, but it may not be, or it may be, because we don't know really what happened there. For example, Hoya compacta. What's going on? What's happening? Hoya compacta was a species published in 1990 by Christine Burton and P.S. the Hoyan. In the publication, she claims that the only similarity with Hoya carnosa is that the sap is not white. It's not milky sap. She claims there is a difference in flower. I have the fortune of not having either Hoya carnosa or Hoya compacta in bloom. One day, maybe, who knows? If she is to believe it could be a different species, I don't really know, as the origin is also unknown. I don't really know if this will ever be cleared up, or are we gonna call it compacta with or without quotation marks? I did check in Q's database, and it seems that in 2019 there was a paper published where this was not accepted name. It was named as Hoya carnosa. But I want to tell you that there are sometimes disagreements between the botanists, between people who do the research, and you know, sometimes they claim something is not a different species, that sometimes it's the same species. Debate. There is debate all the time. For example, it says in Q's database that Hoya flagellata is not a separate species, that is actually Hoya caudata. Some some people who do Hoya research, like Mikel Roda, he claims that Hoya flagellata is a separate species. I don't know. Don't ask me. Do I look like a botanist? No, I don't. Maybe I do. I don't know. What's the, what's the normal botanist look? What's the usual? <laughs> I have a proposition. If you don't know how to write a Hoya name, if you're not certain, just avoid it completely. Completely. <laughs> That's my suggestion. That's how I deal with, you know, writing words in general in life. If I'm uncertain how to spell it, I'm gonna rephrase the sentence or, you know, just try to use a different word that I know how to spell. That's how you deal with problems. Avoid them. I don't know. I hope that other people do this as well. Let me know in the comments. Do you also change the word, use a different word if you're not sure how it's spelled? Sometimes the crosses may not be named, and in that case you would use an X, which signifies that it is a cross. For example, you could write Hoya Finley Sony X for the cross with Hoya... Whatever. <laughs> I don't have a great example, okay? I bet there are some great examples of crosses that Sarissa has. For example, Hoya Elagiorum crossed with Hoya Peninsularis. Ooh, I like that. I wonder how the leaf looks like. Oh my god, I need it! <laughs> this is a very bad Hoya group for me. I like this too. I completely got distracted. Now, the most challenging part, in my opinion. The descriptors. The, the great unknown. The descriptors will be in parentheses. That is the first thing. 
Can I just leave it there? What are descriptors? Descriptors really can tell you something about the leaf, the color of the flower. Sometimes people will put in parentheses the location. We will get to all of these. Hold your horses or hold your hoyas. That's a term we should use. Hold your hoyas. That means to be patient from now on. Patented by me. For example, the variegated hoya of Heuschkeliana. What is the relevant information here? Well, the relevant information here is it is hoya Heuschkeliana. We have the genus, we have the species. If you have the eyes, you can see it is variegated plant. You don't really need that information when you see the plant. If you are selling the plant, Without the photo, yes, this information can come in handy. If you're keeping track of your plants in some form of a sheet, Excel sheet, if you know how to use it, I personally do not. I'm just gonna say I don't f with that. I don't mess with Excel. If you have the variegated edge of the leaf, like this Hoya latifolia in the back, you can see Hoya latifolia albomarginata. Hoya latifolia albomarginated, Hoya latifolia yellow margins, Hoya latifolia white margins, Hoya latifolia margin variegata, Hoya latifolia... Did I forget something? Oh, actually, they would all call it Hoya macrophylla. It's not that. I wrote these down. So people use outer variegated, variegated edge, variegated margin, alba variegated, alba variegata, alba marginata, yellow edge, cream edge, white edge, forgot about that, margin variegata. Yes, so all of those are used. And that's a lot in my opinion, that's a lot. Can we just agree to use one? Like just say variegated edge or yellow edge, for example. Hold on, hair is falling apart, what is happening? Just stay put, stay put. This is my issue. Sometimes people will use different descriptor for the same clone of a plant and people will think it's a different plant. Also, variegated plants. Hoya Hirschkeliana variegata or variegated. First variegata is Latin, we probably should not be using that. But in parentheses you can write inner variegation or variegated or variegata. I would just probably choose inner variegation. The most important thing here to know is that these descriptors are not part of the name. Sometimes Hoyas will be sold with descriptors that are under, for example, single quotation marks. Hoya latifolia, it's sold as Hoya macrophylla and under quotation marks Albo marginata or Albo variegata. That is completely wrong because that would mean that Albo marginata is the name of the cultivar, which is not. It is just a descriptor. It is not a name given by someone. It cannot even ever be name given by someone because it's just a descriptor. In fact, I actually learned the best way to write Hoya names would be to put in italics the name of the genus and the species, and then the rest is just not in italics. So really the most important thing is the genus and the species. I told you this part is a mess and it really is. These descriptors like, for example, variegata or variegated or whatever should never be abbreviated to VAR, to VAR, because that stands for variety. That abbreviation is already taken. It's an abbreviation that is used in botanics and it means something else. So if you don't want to write the full word variegated, it's better not to write it at all than to write the abbreviated form var. Now the leaf size. <sighs> There's a lot of breathing in this video. Like calm down lungs, calm down. <laughs> what? What am I talking about today? Big leaf, small leaf, short leaf, long leaf, whatever leaf, in parentheses. This worries me a bit. I know there is a Callistophila with long leaf and Callistophila with short leaf. I assume that these are two different clones. I may be wrong. Please do say if you know something about this. My question is, if my Hoya latifolia produces a small leaf, and it does sometimes, if I cut that, do I sell the cutting as well to fully a small leaf? I mean, I wouldn't, but are some people out there doing that? Are they getting a super large leaves? Like I have one super or several very large leaves in my Hoyle Tifolia. Are there some people out there that sell cuttings with very large leaves under the descriptor big leaf? Like Hoya Caudata big leaf? Actually, when I purchased it, it was CV. By the way, CV is something that we also don't use anymore. Uh, again, International Code of Nomenclature for Cultivated Plants says CV is not to be used anymore. Instead, single quotation marks. But is it a cultivar? Is it just a descriptor? Should it be in parentheses? 
I also wonder, like, sometimes about the names of the cultivars, like Jody Silver. Who is Jody? Did she have a lot of silver? Is that why we call it Jody Silver? Or like, what about Eclipse or New Moon? Did someone call Stephanie Meyer? And it's like, hey, Stephanie, how are we gonna call this one? Not very creative, the names. I just wonder sometimes when I see, like, why did you name it that? Why not call it Rocket? It doesn't look like an eclipse either, so I can, you can call it White Whale or whatever. You know, it's just, there's so many things that you can use and, you know, they always seem to go back to stardust or moons or eclipses or, you know, can we just come back to Earth? Also, some of the descriptors that I have seen, very hair relief or dense hair relief. Is it? Sometimes I honestly think that these descriptors are used to charge more. Another thing is places. Sometimes we will put the place in the parentheses. For example, Hoa Kaudata, and then in parentheses we will put Sumatra. I got a Hoya recently that was sold as Hoya Glabra and then under single quotation marks Ulu Apin Apin. Ulu Apin Apin refers to a place in Borneo. I think it could be a valley. I wasn't really able to locate it on the map, so if you want to find Ulu Apin Apin, I think the word Ulu just means desolate place and then Apin Apin is a region, but maybe I'm wrong. It was under single quotation marks, but now I believe that it should be in parentheses, that it should be Hoya Glabra and then in parentheses Ulu Apin Apin. Or you can just write Hoya Glabra from Ulu Apin Apin, also Hoya Kaudata from Sumatra, Hoya Rinci from Borneo, so maybe we don't need to write those in parentheses. I'm actually very curious to know about this part, what should we do with the places, because, you know, descriptors are kind of reserved for the leaves, you know, are they variegated or not, but places, do we put those in parentheses, do we really write from? But important thing is not to write these places under single quotation marks, because then People may confuse it and think that it is a cultivar, so it's not Hoya Kaudara, quotation marks, Sumatra, but parentheses, or you can write from Sumatra. Yes, it is a different day, and I did forget to talk about a couple of things. I told you, parentheses suck. Another way that sometimes you can use parentheses is to keep track of old names. It's not that the old names will make a comeback, but it's sometimes important to differentiate between different clones of the same species. For example, Verticillata. A lot of Hoyas recently got grouped into Hoya Verticillata, and a great way to keep track of old names is to write them in parentheses. For example, if you have a Hoya that used to be called Hoya Wybergiae, now you can write Hoya Verticillata, and then in parentheses you can write former Wybergiae. This is good for you for your, for example, Excel sheet or whatever list that you have, so you can see that you have this Hoya if you forget, or just that you can keep track of this plant for whatever reason. The last thing, and I really hope it's the last thing, are the accession numbers. Now, the accession numbers will never be under quotation marks. They will not go in parentheses. You will just write them after the species. The important thing to know about accession numbers is that they relate to a particular clone. Because they relate to a certain clone, it is very important to keep track of your accession numbers. If accession number is lost, Sorry to tell you, but it's gone. You can't really add an accession number to a plant that already lost it. It would be very difficult to prove that that is the exact clone of that plant. Just by looking at photos or flowers, it, it would be very difficult to do that. So the general rule is never to add accession number to a plant that lost it. Okay, I think that is all for today. I have exhausted myself, my battery, my SD card. How long is this recording? Oh, it's two hours. Wow. It's gonna be a 10 minute video, I hope. Fingers crossed. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, right next to the thumbs up, a little bit lower is the subscribe button, not the other one, not the other button next to the thumbs up. That's a bad button. We don't want that button. I hope you're also having a wonderful day. I will see you soon. I need to hydrate, drink more coffee, drink more water, probably water the plants. That's what I need to do. And you know, just generally shut up. 
I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big shout out to my $5 patrons, my one anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Danube Daniels, Hoyas and Whatnots, Jessica Hall, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B. Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Becca Panyard, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Dinsla, and Hacinta. Thank you all so much for your support. I really hope this video wasn't too messy. Let me know how you write Hoya names. Do you write them correctly? I really hope you do. I have gone into a different direction, I think. I'm lost. Help me. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you soon. I wonder if I get my battery down to zero if it will save the recording or not. I don't think I should test that.